Hey folks, I'm excited for you. You have made it through the worst of it. Ionic naming is the hard part. What we're going to do is we're going to go and name some acids today. I will tell you that acid naming is completely based upon ionic naming. So if you don't feel comfortable with ionic naming, please go back and redo it. Do some more worksheets, whatever. Um, ask me for additional help. You need to have that down. You need to have it down cold so you can name acids. Okay? And you'll soon find out why. Now, simple acids always start with H. So here are some examples. So if you notice, all of these start with H. And there's stuff over here that you should recognize. For example, you should recognize that as a chloride ion, or a sulfide ion, or a nitride ion, or an acetate ion. These are all things that you should recognize. All right, acids are found all over. They're found in aspirin, antiseptics, contact solutions, fruits, vitamins, especially stuff like grapefruit. They're very sour. Right, and this wonderful one called vomit. Yeah, if you ever puke, that's that wonderful flavor that you get, that real sour taste. Uh, that's hydrochloric acid that's in your stomach. Okay, so what is an acid? It's a substance that dissolves in water to produce hydrogen ions, H pluses. So it acts like an ionic compound. It separates into a cation and an anion. It's not an ionic compound, but it kind of acts like one. And the cation is always H plus. That's why they all started with H. All right. So the anion is going to depend on the acid. So when HCl separates, it separates into H plus and Cl minus. Or when hydrogen nitrate separates, you get hydrogen and you get nitrate. And here you get hydrogen and you get sulfate. Notice you have two hydrogen ions, right, because it's H2SO4. And then you get sulfate the sulfate ion as well, which has a 2 minus charge. That kind of tells you where the two came from, doesn't it? If you have something with a charge over here, it's going to cause you to have two of those. Okay. All right. You must memorize these rules. So pause the video, please. Write them down. Right. The thing that's on the left, these are all anions. So if your anion ends in IDE, then your acid is going to be a hydroic acid. So write these down first, and then we'll go over it. Okay, so if I look, for example, at HCl, HCl is hydrogen chloride. So if I, if I name it like a, an ionic compound, it's going to be hydrogen on the left and chloride on the right. So here is my chlor, C-H-L-O-R, chloride. So it would become hydro, C-H-L-O-R, hydrochloric acid. And ClO3 is chlorate. This is hydrogen chlorate. So again, I put in the CHLOR from chlorate, and I stick it over here. CHLOR, and it becomes chloric acid. Now, folks, don't be confused. Chloric acid, it's not chloric acid because it doesn't have an H, and it doesn't have this hydro because it does have an H. Right? This is just a naming convention. And the fact that it is chloric acid indicates to me that the anion is going to be chlorate. It's going to end in ATE. That's the rule. And all acids are going to begin with H, so I don't have to worry about saying it has an H out there. That's what the word acid tells me, that it has an H out there. Right. And then I have HClO2. This is hydrogen, and it's chlorite. So since it's chlorite, again, I put the chlor out there, so this becomes chlor us acid. Right? So just using those three, you can see that you have hydrochloric acid, chloric acid, and chloros acid. And that's how you name the three of them. Right? Now if you remember, when we looked at this, uh, we looked at this graphic, if you will, um, in a previous podcast, where we talked about how there were different um, that you started with chlor with chlorate. And if you took an electron away, you had chlorite. And if you took another one away, you had hypochlorite. And if you add an electron to chlorate, you got perchlorate. Well, the same thing is true with acids. Because it ends, this one ends in ite, that's an OUS acid, remember. So it would become hypochlorous acid. And this one has ends in ate, so it would become perchloric acid. So let's look at those, how they fit in here. Right? Um, we had hydrochloric acid, and that's completely separate because it had IDE. But when we look at chloric acid, we said that was HClO3 because this is chlorate. 
and this is chlorite. Now this is hypochlorite, so this would become hypochlorous acid. So all of our naming conventions still remain the same. Now this is, instead of being 8, this is perchlorate. So this is per chlor, C H L, I can't spell, per C H L O R I C acid. So it's just important to realize that all of our rules were still building on each other. Okay? So everything you learned about ionic compounds still applies here. Right? Now, Pause the video, see if you can name these. The rules are up on top. You're eventually going to have to do it without the rules on top, but right now, go ahead and try on your own. Okay, this first one here, the N is nitride, so that's this one. So this would be hydronitric, N-I-T-R, nitric, hydronitric. And this is hydrogen nitrate, so this would be nitric acid. And your other one would be nitrous acid, because this is nitrite. This is hydrogen nitrite. Again, you're looking at the ion, at the anion, and the anion depend, drives what type of acid it is. Right? All based on the name of the anion. That's the name of the anion up there. All right. You go ahead and try some. See if you can do it. Okay, welcome back. Your first one, this is going to be, this is, again, I'm going to name them two ways. This is hydrogen bromide, which means this has to be hydrobromic acid. All right. MnO4, that is permanganate. So it ends in A-T-E, so this is going to be permanganic. Permanganic. Ick acid. All these are going to end in the word acid. Right. CrO4, that is chromate. Again, it ends in ATE. So since it ends in ATE, this ends in an ick acid. So it is chromic acid. This one is borate. So this is boric acid. And this last one, this is acetate, so it is acetic acid, also known as vinegar. All right, now I do have some unusual names. When you look at H2S, you say, well, that is sulfide. So that would be hydrosulfic acid. That doesn't sound right, and it's not right, because... You, the, the way these are named, sulfur and phosphorus, you put the entire name in there. So this would be hydrosulfuric acid. This is sulfate, so it would be an ick acid, so it is sulfuric acid. And this one down here, this is ite, that's sulfite, so that would be an OUS acid, so this is sulfurous acid. Same thing works for phosphorus. You have hydros, hydrophosphoric acid, hydro, um, phosphoric acid, and phosphorus acid. Okay. So you put the entire name in there. All right. Reverse the process. See if you can do it. Now remember, the number of hydrogens is completely dependent upon the charge of the, um, of the anion. So if I look at hydrofluoric acid, if I do the process in reverse, hydroic means I'm looking for fluoride. Fluoride is F. So this is HF. Now, what kind of charge does F take on? It takes on a minus one, so that means I have one hydrogen. So HF is my final answer. Carbonic acid, it's an ick acid. You'll know there's nothing out here. There's no hydrocarbonic acid. It's just carbonic acid. So I have to look for carbonate. Now, if you remember, that was one of the ones you were supposed to memorize. Carbonate is CO3. And carbonate has a 2 minus charge. So that means I need two hydrogens. So this becomes H2CO3. See if you can do the next couple on your own.
All right, carbonous acid means we're looking at carbonite, which is CO2. It also has a 2 minus charge, so we have to have two hydrogens in front. Remember, all acids start with H. All right, hydrocyanic acid, ooh, that's got the hydro in front, so that means I'm looking for cyanide. Well, the first place I look when I see an IDE is on the periodic table, but there is no such thing called cyanide on the periodic table. So I look back on my ion chart and I find that cyanide is CN. And it has a 1 minus charge. So that means I only need one H in front of it. All right, you go ahead and try some and then come back and I'll go through them with you. <clears throat> okay, acetic acid tells me I'm looking for acetate. That's C2H3O2 and there's one of them. There's, it has a 1 minus charge, so I have 1 hydrogen. Sulfuric is, S, is SO4 because I'm looking for sulfate. It has a hydrogen in front of it, but sulfate has a 2 minus charge, so that is going to be H2, SO4. Dichromic means I'm looking for dichromate, Cr2, R2O7. And Cr2O7 has a minus 2 charge, which means I have to have H2, Cr2, O7. Phosphorus acid means I'm looking for phosphite. Well, phosphate is PO4. Phosphite would therefore be PO3. It has a 3 minus charge, so that means I have to have three hydrogens to offset my 3 minus charge. Oh, phosphoric acid. How convenient. That's H3. PO4. PO4 is phosphate, and I have to have hydrogen in front, and I have to have three of them. All right, so you have to know the three rules, and you have to be able to apply them. Again, you have to be able to come up with ionic names for these things. If you're struggling with ionic names, you're going to struggle with this. So fix the ionic names first, then come back and do acids again. Okay, any questions? Find me in class. See you then. Have a good one. Bye-bye.